<laughs> okay, welcome to All Things Odd. I'm Dr. Natalie Phillips, and I'm Dr. Hannah Galloway, and um, we are actually trying something different. I think we're going to keep Okay, hold on. <laughs> so what we're trying, let me get rid of this. Okay, so what we were trying was we were trying to actually go live at the same time, multi-streaming to Instagram. And I think that we were getting a weird echo. So um, we are live, but we are live here on Facebook and also um, YouTube. Oh, no. Today, we're not on YouTube and LinkedIn right now, and then we'll drop the episode on YouTube, but I'm going to have Dr. Galloway kind of share what our YouTube looks like for right now. Yep. So this is our YouTube. Um, so you can look up our business name and you can see, you can subscribe there. We get more subscribers all the time, um, but that way it'll let you know when we have a new video. Um, we try to come on every Thursday, but things come up. Um, so we don't always have a new, a new episode, but this way you'll get reminded if we do have one. And the thumbnail images are where it's at on the YouTube because they're more fun. <laughs> yeah. And then you can kind of like search if you want to um, as far as where to share it um, or if you have family members that you just want them to watch, maybe like research or something like that, um, they can kind of see the different playlists that we have. So you can kind of do that. So I will close this. So today we have a great episode talking a little more about last minute gift shopping. So did you finish your gift shopping so far? I have. Yes, I have two toddlers. Um, so no one's getting anything except for them. It's all about them. And I remember really all I've days. shopped for. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a last minute shopper or you're still looking for gifts, we are going to be talking about some fun things that you can have um, for people that have hearing loss. And so that's what we have. Um, Dr. Galloway has a little kind of cute basket. I have a snowman has... basket full of all of our um, little stocking stuffer items. Ironically, audiology gifts are just good for stocking stuffers because they're little. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of things that we can tell you that you could put in stockings or just things that are good to know about. Yeah. So we have our top 10 um, stocking stuffers and some bonuses too. So mm -hmm. we're going to start off with the first item. Okay. So first thing is earplugs and we're going to kind of keep it general. Um, I've got a couple different kinds to show you. Um, everybody knows about traditional foam earplugs. This is in a nice little plastic case, but these are foam earplugs. Um, I like when they have a case because then you can find them in your bag or whatever. And it's a little bit easier and they stay cleaner. Um, there's also some called loop um, earplugs that have kind of gotten popular. I've seen them a lot on NPR or heard about them on NPR. They must be like sponsoring NPR. Um, but it it's called a loop and you can see my fingernail um, it's just a little, that's a little plastic loop that I'm holding onto. And then it has a little kind of flange on the end of it that goes into your ear. So from the outside, you're going to, if this was in my ear, you're going to see just this plastic loop on the outside and it makes it easy to, um, get it out of your ear. These have just been popular in the last few years that I've seen. I've never tried them. Um, these are Mary Kate's, our doctorate student. She's with a patient right now. Um, so she can give us her two cents on them, but I've seen them kind of getting more popular. Another one that I like is called ETY. It's Etymotic Research, um, but you can get them on Amazon. They come in two different sizes. They, I wish I had mine with me today, but they have a little plastic stick that is a filter and that's what you pull it in and out of your ear with. And then the actual plug is like a flange plug that looks like a little Christmas tree. So it's, you know, like silicone and you can take it off the filter and wash it and that kind of thing. So I really like those because they're um, non-custom. So they're affordable, mm -hmm. like 20 bucks a pair or something like that, but they work great. And then you can buy multiple sets to keep in your sports bag or, you know, your backpack, wherever you might. I need them. Yeah. And so as we kind of go through these stocking stuffers, you know, if you are somebody who's watching and you're like, oh, I remember having that, uh, receiving that as um, a gift if you have hearing loss um, or if you have somebody that you've gifted something, like put it in the comments so that we can kind of add that to the show and make this as a resource for people who might need some last minute gifts or some gifts in general um, for people that have hearing loss just to make their lives easier. All right. So earplugs is the first one. The second one is ear planes. So these are kind of fun because they do have um, 
both the pediatric size, which is the yellow box that Dr. Galloway is holding. And then also um, we didn't bring another one, but they also have a an adult size too. You can open that one. Yeah. And so what's cool about this is like, I recommend people to um, travel with these. Like I, everybody in my family has a set of these in their travel bag because they're little, um, earplugs that have filters in them. And so have you ever felt like, you know, when you're changing altitudes, like you are just um, like, you feel like it's like it hurts or that there's some difficulty. Um, and maybe you can take it out of the case too. And we can yeah. Kind of show gonna it try to see how you can um, yeah. see the shape of it. It's kind of more of like a flange plug too. Yeah. And so what it does is like you would put these, the, these little earplugs in and, and you can't see it necessarily. Maybe you can if you have good eyes, but there's a tiny little filter in there. And so if you are using the this type of earplug when you're traveling like on an airplane, um, whether it's ascending or descending, it's helping you equalize the pressure a little bit slower from one side of your eardrum. So on the outside versus the inside where the eustachian tube goes down to the sinuses or to the nose. And so a lot of people, they have either eustachian tube dysfunction, you know, or they have difficulty equalizing that pressure. Um, so earplanes really make a great option for you to um, reduce that pain. Some Sometimes even if you're traveling and you are sick, you know, what I normally do is like I carry around or I'll go and get even like a sinus um, spray to make sure that I kind of thin down my sinus passageways and stuff before I get on a plane so that it's a little bit easier to equalize that pressure as well. But earplanes is a great thing that you can get. Um, they sell them at drugstores. You know, we have them here. So if you want to do that, remember there's different sizes. So there's a, mm -hmm. a pediatric or a kid size as well as an adult size. So I love earplanes. Yep. I know they have them at Target because I've seen them there. And then we also um, sell them. So just make sure you get the right size. Yep. All right. Next. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is just different hearing aid accessories. And so if you followed our show for long or you've watched, you have seen some of the cool things that we have brought on the show, like Deaf Metal. Um, mm -hmm. That's the one that's for cochlear implant um, charms. And I think they also have things for hearing aids as well. Um, cochlear implant stickers. Um, even stickers for hearing aids. So when we order pediatric hearing aids, they come with a set of stickers. Um, interestingly enough, I recently was putting a sticker on a kid's hearing aid and I noticed that it would be very easy to cover up the microphone ports with the stickers. And this was um, an Oticon hearing aid um, for a child, but they it kind of had a guide of how to place it. So that's something that I'm going to counsel about better to parents mm -hmm. of just, you know, make sure you don't cover up these two ports with the that's sticker because point. that is where the sound comes in. So it can look really cool, but if it doesn't work, then it's not worth anything. So um, that was one thing that I was randomly thinking of. Mm -hmm. But there's also jewels and charms for devices. Um, sometimes I've seen people have like charms on the tubing between the BTE mm -hmm. and the mold. Old. Um, we have a cochlear implant patient that has this little like um, coiled up material around her actual <laughs> coil cable. And so she has a charm too. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just different things that you can kind of decorate with and, you know, be unique. And especially for kids or teenagers, I think it helps to kind of, you know, make it your own. Um, so that is our number three is just different hearing aid accessories. Ah. All right, so we're if you're just joining in too, then we are going over some fun, our top 10 stocking stuffers and some bonuses. So the next one that we have is a Wi-Fi smart doorbell. So I don't know if you guys have thought about this because a lot of people now have like Ring devices or Wise or Arlo or whatever you have for cameras on your home. Um, and so uh, this is a little bit different, but also somewhat the same because now when you somebody rings the doorbell or is on your porch, you can actually look at your app, right? So it's very mm -hmm. similar, but a Wi-Fi smart doorbell is where you actually get an alert if somebody is there, right? So sometimes, um, you know, you, you'll, somebody will ring the doorbell, you'll get the alert and you can kind of pull it up. But if you're having a hearing loss, just remember that some of these smart doorbells now can actually um, alert you in your hearing aids as well. And so um, depending on how you have your hearing aids connected to your phone and the alerts and the notifications, um, just remember that some of these Wi-Fi smart doorbells are more helpful for people that have a hearing loss uh, because not only can they, um, see and know that somebody's there, but it, they'll get alerted in their hearing aids while they're wearing it too. So I think um, I, I had one patient telling me, and I can't remember which one they had, but there was a better range for them in their home 
with one versus the other. Like oh. they could be in the basement and it would still let them know versus, I, I don't remember which one it was, but that might be something to check out too, is just, you know, for somebody with hearing loss, it's not just like a luxury of like, oh, also having video feed. It's knowing that there was, you know, somebody at the door at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so that might be something to consider or test out too. Yeah. All right. Here's the next one. Okay, the next one is a vibrating alarm clock or bed shaker. So these two things are kind of old school um, and they are, you know, a bed shaker. There are things that actually go under your pillow or um, under your mattress that like actually shake the bed in response to the alarm clock. Um, alarm clocks in general are just kind of old school because everybody uses their phone now. And so I had a patient recently and he has a uh, very significant hearing loss and has always used a bed shaking device. But he said as of recently, that doesn't even wake him up anymore. Wow. Um, and so he had got an Apple watch because you can use that mm -hmm. haptic feedback on your watch to wake you up. I do not have a hearing loss, but I wake up every morning to my watch vibrating because I don't want my kids to get woken up before me. Um, so that will wake me up and no one else, which is really nice. But um, my patient started using that. And so that was something I wanted to bring up. I know Apple Watches have that um, haptic feedback. I'm sure you can even get a less expensive version of just like a little wristband or mm -hmm. something that vibrates. Um, but those are options for patients because when they go to bed, they're going to take out their hearing aids or their cochlear implant. And then that leaves them unable to hear the alarm clock. Um, and so these are just a few options, um, for something else. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, that's a great option, especially that Apple has done. So mm -hmm. I think that that works out really well. Um, our next item or next stocking stuffer is over the ear headphones. So this one's kind of cool. Um, our audiology resident, Mary Kate, uh, she had made this list for us and she also brought in her over the ear headphones and both Hannah and I were just like, the, these are made by Apple. And we're like, no, they're not made by Apple. And I was like, wait a minute, maybe I think that's what my kids wanted. So yeah. we looked it up really quick, but these are actually over the ear headphones made by Apple. And they're still called AirPods. She wrote AirPods. She makes me feel like a really old person, even though I'm only eight years older than her, but I saw AirPods. I'm like, is this the AirPod? <laughs> so I looked it up. This is AirPod Max. Um, and they're, um, more expensive than regular AirPods, but they are made by Apple and they go over your ears. Mm -hmm. Um, I can already tell that they have some pretty good, um, sound cancellation. She, Mary Kate travels a lot and she really likes these. I know she also has a pair of regular AirPods. So mm -hmm. I would be interested to ask her, you know, when she prefers these mm -hmm. over the other ones. Um, but yeah, these are called AirPods Max. Yeah. And I like those too, because like my kids are into this and I think mm -hmm. it's because it looks cooler now, but also like if I wear my AirPods, even though it's much smaller and it's easier to take when I travel, like my ears get tired and sore after yeah. a while. And so I think these, because what they're called, what, mm -hmm. what we call them supra oral. So they go over your entire ear. I think it gives it a little bit of a rest and, mm -hmm. um, you it know, does. they're a little more comfortable. So that could be it too. Um, just after me wearing them for like a second. So I have AirPods Pro, just the regular ones that goes in your ear. And they have transferred the same like transparency oh. to these. So I could actually see somebody with hearing loss that would really prefer these mm -hmm. because it gets rid of a lot of the background sound. Or I always wear my AirPods when I'm my in the ear AirPods when I'm traveling because I just don't like the extra noise on the plane. It stresses mm -hmm. me out. And so this is the kind of the same thing. Um these are really cool. I'm impressed. Yeah. I didn't know they well, existed. So. And because they go over the ear, let's just talk about that real quick. Yep. So a lot of the times people that we fit with hearing aids, they have those, those domes that go on the end of the hearing aids. They're open, right? Because they have some normal hearing in the lower pitches. And then it's more of a high frequency hearing loss. And so they have open domes. And so when, even though their hearing aids are connected by Bluetooth to their phone and they're watching a movie, they're still going to be able to hear around them. Like it doesn't cut out the background mm -hmm. noise when you have an open fit. And so with these types of super oral headphones that go over your ears, you can essentially leave your hearing aids on to have the streaming going. And then you can technically put that over, you know, or you could have the streaming go through that, whichever one. But that seems to be better because that will definitely give you that um, transparency or the noise canceling that you're looking for over your hearing aids, right? So that would be a great mm -hmm. option for people that have hearing aids. Because if you have an open fit, or you have a very mild loss, and you can still use your natural hearing to hear, mm -hmm. most likely, if you're going to travel and you're going to try to stream through your hearing aids, the air, the airplane noise is going to be pretty loud still. Right. And so that might be a great option to stream it with those instead of your hearing aids that are Bluetooth yep. connected. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, without getting like too technical, people will come in and they say, well, I got on the plane. I tried to listen to my podcast, but I just really couldn't hear it. So then I put my AirPods in and it was perfect. Mm. And I talk about passive versus versus active um, noise reduction, because if you have something in your ear, whether it's a Kleenex or a piece of plastic or whatever, it's actually passively blocking the ear so that sound is not getting into it or noise is not getting into it. So with hearing aids, we don't want you to walk around all day plugged up, feeling plugged up if you don't have to. Some people have more severe hearing loss and that's what they have to do, but they don't tend to have as much problems on the plane because they're not as bothered by the noise. It's not coming in as readily. Um, so without that being too much information, you wouldn't want to walk around all day with your ears plugged up if you didn't have to. So people are like, but why are my AirPods better for music? Well, they might be better for music on the plane, but like you wouldn't want to walk around with that hard piece of plastic in your ear all day. You know, it just gives a different sound quite literally. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I bring that up too, because some people think, oh, these transducers or these, you know, this um, system is not as good as the AirPod system, which it's just totally different. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the appeal of newer hearing aids is that they don't make you feel plugged up. They are, you know, let you hear the sound kind of more naturally. So anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So I know that we had talked about different hearing aid accessories. I just noticed this, that we have two. So there are hearing aid accessories and then there are hearing aid accessories. So the <laughs> last time we talked about hearing aid accessories, Dr. Galloway talked more about like the death metal charms or the cochlear mm -hmm. implant stickers or the hearing aid stickers, you know, different types of things. So those are types of hearing aid accessories yeah. for sure. Then these types of hearing aid accessories are things that can be coupled with hearing aids that, to make your life easier. Mm -hmm. So it could be like a little remote microphone that's clipped to um, your shirt uh, that you can also pass around at like dinner parties or um, if you're driving in the car with your spouse, they could actually wear it. Um, so that way when the voice reaches that microphone on their lapel or wherever they clip that microphone, it goes directly to your ears. So that's another type of hearing aid accessory. Um, maybe something that streams to your TV. And so there might be like a box or something that you can put to um, plug into the back of your TV. Um, and then you open up your app on your phone and you're able to stream your TV directly to maybe your phone or directly to your hearing aids, whichever way it's set up. And you'd be able to um, hear the TV without it kind of coming through the room and degrading the signal. So like I said, there's hearing aid accessories and then there's hearing aid accessories. Yeah. So there's a couple of different ones. These are a little bit more technology. Like Bluetooth and, accessories. Yeah, related to your hearing aids than some of the other accessories that we um, had earlier to kind of like spice up your hearing right. aids. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we are getting down to, we have three more of our top 10 stocking stuffers and we've got some bonuses. So I believe this is going to be the um, eighth one. No, yes. Yes, it's the eighth. the eighth one. Okay, so the eighth one that we have is AirPod cleaning kit. Um, so again, Mary Kate is not in here, <laughs> but she has an AirPod cleaning kit. And so I don't really have a lot of specific information on it, but it is used to clean your AirPods. Um, like I said, these are AirPods Max, and I'm not sure if they have different cleaning products mm -hmm. or not, but the regular AirPods we have showed on our show, putting in the Redux, mm -hmm. our um, system where it'll suck moisture out. Obviously these AirPod Max headphones are not gonna fit in the Redux, but that is one way that you can also clean your AirPods. Um, and we have a leg up because we have all these little hearing aid cleaning tools. So mm -hmm. when we bring our AirPods in, we have all these little like picks and things to, to get wax out of them. Um, but there is an actual AirPod cleaning kit. So if you know somebody that doesn't have hearing loss and they're always wearing their mm -hmm. AirPods, I wear AirPods. I didn't even know that existed. So yeah, I didn't need to look into. Yeah. I think when my daughter had come in, um, I've had her put her AirPods in the Redux and then I got a bunch of tools out for her to clean her AirPods. Yeah. So it might be something where I'm like, um, here's an AirPod cleaning kit. You should do this regularly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here's our ninth stocking stuffer. And this one's kind of exciting. So I'm going to have Dr. Galloway <laughs> hold up. Um, Only we could get excited. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we get excited this. about this. Okay. So these are little vent cleaners. They're actually made for... Um, dentures and so it's called proxy soft bridge and implant cleaner oh, you have to show the back of the box and so the back is going to show you how to clean your teeth um that's not what we use it for but <laughs> this is what the packaging looks like if you see this and you're like what i want to try this at home mm -hmm. um 
So how it works is it's like really fibrous dental floss. So it's for if people have like big gaps in between their teeth. Um, but for us, we like to use it down the tubing of a hearing aid. So I'll pull one out here so you can see what it looks like. Um, and so we can thread it through somebody's hearing aid to get wax and debris out. Probably should have done this beforehand. But um, so in between my fingers here, the blue ends, let me get the other side so you can see, the blue ends are just like traditional floss or like a little threading end. And then the middle is like more fibrous. If I pull it tight, you can see how it's just kind of like, it'll pull things out from inside of the tube. So um, with hearing aids that are like BTEs, you can put this down between the tubing. So you can take it off at the ear hook thread this down through the ear mold tubing and pull it all the way through. And so it'll pull out moisture or debris or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really helpful. We love to, to use these. Yeah. And BTE stands for behind the ear. And I honestly, like with the tubing, before we would only use like a little air blower that we would be able to put on the top of the tubing to try to blow anything out. So I love that because that really gets deep into there and just kind of cleans out the entire tube. Sometimes I would say anywhere between what, six months to a year, sometimes depending, we have to replace the tubes anyway for people that wear behind the ear hearing aids. When it turns hard, the sound doesn't conduct through as well. And so when we put a new softer material on or a new tube, um, the sound quality is a lot better in those behind the ear hearing aids. And so um, that's a great way to kind of keep it clean. If there's any moisture that um, gets in there to really try to dry that out as well. And it's good for if you have a patient that's ambitious and they will do it at home by themselves, they just need the supplies. And obviously you're not going to find this as an audiology mm -hmm. supply unless you know what you're looking for. But there are patients that could be really successful with this that otherwise would not mm -hmm. have a lot of success at home cleaning their hearing aid. Yeah, I'm thinking of one person who always comes back and watches our show later on um, that she would actually really like this for yeah. her behind <laughs> the ear. So tell your husband um, or have him watch this show or share it with him because I think it'd be really good to have. So, um, all right. So, which brings us to a couple of bonuses, uh, stocking stuffers, and then we've got our last one. Okay. So one of the bonuses that we found as another stocking stuffer, and this I say is a bonus because, um, I had a patient come in and ask if we had these and I was like, Oh, I go, well, we have them in our office. And usually when people come in and bring their hearing aids, we're always like cleaning off their devices and everything like that. And she goes, no, my mom had like a whole box of these. Um, in her home. And now that I've got hearing aids, like I want to be able to have them at home to clean mm -hmm. off my hearing aids. So there so they they're are. audio wipes. These are like the little pre-packs. So it's kind of like, you know, first aid wipe or whatever that it comes in its own mm -hmm. little pack. We decided to stock these in our office because they'll last longer. Um, what we use comes out of like a big tub, mm -hmm. but that dries out quicker. And this would be the kind of thing where you're going to do a deep cleaning of your hearing aids every once in a while. And you just want to be able to use one of these. So they come in a bigger box, but there's these individual wipes. So you can put them in your bag or whatever. Yeah. Um, and if you're having any issues, it's just a kind of quick and easy way to clean. Here is the bigger bag or the bigger box. It's called Audiologist Choice Audio Wipes. So you can come buy those in our office. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon mm -hmm. or somewhere too. But I was happy to know they have the little individual wrapped ones because that makes more sense for people to buy mm -hmm. to keep at home. Yeah. And then to also travel with too. Just yes. throw a couple of them in there. All right. This one also is, this was also a bonus. However, um, I do believe that... Um, we always talk about this too, because it's a dry aid kit. And mm -hmm. so this kind of helps to really draw the moisture out on a daily basis. If you want to, you see those little pellets right there mm -hmm. when they're the sand color, um, those will always be the sand color, but then there's activated pellets, which are blue. And when they're blue, then they're ready to draw the moisture out of the hearing aids. And so as long as you have some blue pellets in there, they'll draw moisture out. So what you do is, you know, at the end of the day, you can, now that a lot of hearing aids are rechargeable, there's not a lot of problem. There's not as much problem, I should say, with moisture, but you could probably put them in your dry aid kit, seal them up, um, and it'll draw the moisture out. Then you could probably take them out and then just put them on the charger if you want to, or if you've got regular hearing aids as well. We had an engineer try it with his battery it in the hearing aid and still in that bottle and it didn't do anything to the battery. So it's okay to just swing those battery doors open, stick everything in that little bottle and seal it up and it'll draw the moisture out and it won't affect the battery as well. Um, but dry aid kits are um, pretty inexpensive, like maybe $10, $15 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a great thing to have so that 
you can literally draw the moisture out of your hearing aids on your own. And then if not, we have our big Redux system um, that we can kind of put your hearing aids through. It's not big, but it does a, lot, a powerful job. Yeah, it does more than, mm -hmm. than these. These are nice to like have in your suitcase or have at home for an emergency or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully you don't need it. It would just be, you know, especially when you're traveling or something, that's not a good time to have hearing aid issues. So yeah. it's nice to have some backup. And then our final one um, is actually uh, where this is our last stocking stuffer. And our biggest recommendation is, I want to say, you know what's so odd? I had this conversation with a patient is that no matter how well we do, there's still about 80% of people that have hearing loss that are not getting hearing aids, right? Mm -hmm. And so we try to educate people. There's so much research behind getting into hearing aids early. Um, and so our last recommendation is uh, pretty much stating the obvious, but if you need hearing aids, like get in here and get tested yep. and a new set of hearing aids would be a wonderful stocking stuffer um, or a gift um, because we definitely think that it's something that, you know, again, there's a lot of people out there that maybe they need it, but they want to try it. So I would go into your audiologist or go in and find out if they have live listening experiences like we do or, or demo times where you can actually try hearing aid out, not just in the office, but out in your own environments to see how much it's helping you or not, and then make your decision. So if, if not taking that huge jump to try to get a hearing aid, at least to try to get in mm -hmm. and go through a live listening experience would be my recommendation. What about you? Yep. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, and then, you know, patients that already have hearing aids, just getting ahead of the problem. I know a lot of people like to keep them for as long as possible, but sometimes I see patients and I tell them this is on its last leg. And once it is on its last leg, if it breaks or you lose it, like you're kind of in a pickle. And so mm -hmm. getting ahead of that while your old ones still work or, you know, a lot of times people don't want to do anything until the push comes to shove, but then it's kind of an emergency for them, you know, because they don't have anything. So um, especially at the end of the year, we get a lot of questions about insurance and that kind of stuff. So just being familiar with what your policy is, when you can get a new set paid for by insurance, if you can. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, if you're eligible, you can get something new and still have a backup pair that works and just makes everyone feel a little bit better. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, well, that, that's our top 10 stocking stuffers for you last minute shoppers or you're still looking around to get some gifts. Um, be here next week because we have another episode before the end of the year that'll probably be our last episode before the end of the year. And we have our audiology resident, Mary Kate. She's so hyped up. She's already planning for our last episode. So you don't want to miss that. And we will be here live at 12.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, next Thursday. And you guys have a great holiday with your families and stay safe. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.